Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Reiter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. This is of a patient who attended reporting a, a blocked right ear, and that was the, the first ear that you just saw. And this is their left ear, which was, they had some partial occluding earwax, which they wanted me to remove, which I did. Now, I asked them whether they used anything in their ears, like a cotton bird, uh, or the way ear, earbuds, and they, they said uh, they didn't, but you may have seen um, when I entered the ear in the wax itself, there wasn't a circular indentation in it. Um, to me, it looked as though an object had been used and that part of the wax was a bit more impacted as well. But nonetheless, we, we just using uh, a zonal suction probe here and see this wax is quite dark. It's been there for a while. It's oxidized. A freshly secreted wax is more a lighter brown. And as the wax ages and matures, it oxidizes it's a bit like an apple or an avocado when you cut into it and uh, so when you expose the flesh of it and then it turns darker in color and almost a uh, jet black in appearance so with this uh, wax plug um, I'm just going around the perimeter and we're just trying to detach the wax plug from the ear canal wall so this is the back part of the ear canal um, this is more of the anterior parts of the front part we've already loosened uh, the inferior, so the base of the ear canal. So you can see we're just going all the way around. And this is where an endoscope really provides you with an unparalleled view. We're able to see the whole wax plug within the ear canal. And now I'm using this rocking motion. So I've got this suction grip and I'm rocking backwards and forwards, left to right. And we're trying to maneuver this wax plug out of the ear. Now, this wax plug does extend quite deep in the ear and the ear canal is bendy, so as we're trying to release this wax, we're having to come forwards, but also tr we're trying to meander around the bends of the ear canal. So the ear canal has two bends. Uh, the first bend is about a half a centimetre into the ear canal, and the second bend is a further half a centimetre into the ear canal, or thereabouts. So the ear canal, you can think about it like a, 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 an S bend. And I believe the evolutionary advan advantage of having a bendy ear canal is that it protects the eardrums so if you've got a front body or an object that enters the ear, it can't penetrate directly th to the eardrum uh, without having to navigate the bend, which is going to be difficult. So managed to remove that wax plug, lovely healthy eardrum, got a fantastic view there. They have got a little pimple to the right hand side of the ear canal, just there where I am. And um, I mean, the ear is clean, but because what that's all this, all this is in the cartilage in this portion, I just went back in with a Johnson horn and I'm just gently just applying some pressure on the cartilaginous portion and it, this is not uncomfortable for the patient so I'm happy to do that. If it's any further on the bony part of the ear canal then I would leave that because that will be uncomfortable. And you can probably see the border so you can see there's a rim of wax uh, so at the top and that's where the cartilaginous portion of the ear canal meets the bony part. So you can't always see the border but on this patient you can it was quite a clean line there. So we don't want to get any further with the jobs on horn than the wax itself. Because the, the reason why we, we want to avoid the bony part of the ear canal because it's very, very sensitive. Um, so the cartilaginous portion, the outer third, it's made of cartilage, it's flexible. Um, it's, I wouldn't say it's completely insensitive, but it's semi-sensitive. Whereas the, the bony part of the ear canal, it's rigid, it's very sensitive, it's not malleable in any way. And the skin that lines the outer third of the ear canal, so the cartilage portion is a lot thicker, so it's about a millimetre in thickness, whereas the skin that lines the, the bony part of the ear canal is far, far thinner, it's uh, almost 10 to 15 times thinner, so we're looking at less than 0.1 millimetres in thickness, and it's, that skin is directly attached to the bone. There's no fatty tissue there to buffer it, so if you do come in contact with the bony part, it can be uncomfortable for the patient. So just use some oil to remove this wax, so it's a bit more stickier. And now again, I'm just going to use the Jobson horn. I'm just trying to gently scoot this because we're on the cartilaginous portion, it's not a problem. Now, I'm not going to be able to get all of it out because some of it is stained and that will naturally migrate itself. You can see it's quite a bendy ear, so the endoscope's lined up to look directly into the ear canal. And the ear canal is, veers off to the left. We can only see the back part of the, the, the eardrum here. So 
this wax, it's almost in a blind spot. With, with most of the instrumentation, you wouldn't see this, but in most people's ears, as you enter the ear, to the back near the entrance. In the case of the right ear, it's to the left, right near the entrance. In, in the case of the left ear, where we are now, it's to the right-hand side, right near the entrance. It's almost like a little blind spot. With an endoscope, um, you're able to visualise it. And sometimes endoscope, for that reason, are a bit of a negative. You can, you can see everything. Sometimes you don't need to remove all the wax, and that, that's key. And um, So sometimes you see less, it's better, because you're not worried about leaving some insignificant wax in here. So that's the, the large wax plug is the one from the right here, the smaller one's from the left. I've got a pencil tip there, it's a reference point. Um, in terms of the size, you can see just how dark the wax is. It has been there for a while. Um, I hope you're all keeping well, guys. And remember to be nice and be kind to each other. Thank you. Bye.